So now that we've gone through the unique process, let's go back to the beginning, the gap assessment. A gap assessment is a 10-week deep dive into your company's goals, KPIs, and growth opportunities. And it's also a way to look at your total marketing potential in relation to the size of your industry and how much market share you need to reach your goals. A gap assessment is an extremely thorough process that happens at the beginning of your journey with Ferrotech. But we're going to talk about it in more detail later in this presentation. What you should know is that the data that is extracted from this process serves as the backbone of the system that we are building for your organization. It's our vision to help your team 10x your business leads and opportunities, identify critical gaps in your marketing approach, develop foundational marketing assets to scale campaigns, create and maintain a marketing scorecard, identify your quarterly priorities and goals, review your competition, identify the lifetime value of your current and prospective clients, and finally, establish an ROI model that scales as your business grows. Our approach is designed to establish a foundation for your marketing that can be scalable. To do this effectively, we have to generate short-term and long-term goals. Building a system takes time, and there are certain elements of our process such as SEO, building domain authority, establishing your brand and messaging, that will always be a work in progress. However, while there are long-term goals, our system is also designed to generate quick wins and capitalize on low-hanging fruit. To maximize the benefit of the compounding power of our comprehensive approach, it's imperative that you have a balance between your short-term and long-term goals. Let's walk through some of the highlights of what we cover in the gap assessment. Obviously, the first place we're gonna start is with your brand. And when I say brand, I don't just mean your logo, your font, and your color scheme. While all of that's important, I'm talking about how you establish and refine your message to a variety of different target audiences and buyer personas. We utilize a scientific process, and to help us with that, we lean on a proven outline from the book, Building a Story Brand. Let me get a copy of that. In his book, Donald Miller outlines a turnkey approach to help your company clarify your message to maximize engagement. We've taken this approach one step further with our story guide exercise that allows us to take your newly refined message and apply it to our comprehensive marketing approach. The next step of our process is to identify all of your ideal buyer personas and influencers who might engage with your marketing. What I'd like to do is bring Chris back to the stage to talk about an example. Let's examine our approach that we took for one of our most recognized clients the Rothman Orthopedics Institute. Rothman Orthopedics is one of the most renowned orthopedics practices in the United States, according to US News and World Report. We helped lead their digital optimization strategy for nearly a decade. At that time, Rothman had a very successful marketing campaign called Rothman First. We piggybacked off of that campaign to create a wide net approach. Let me explain what that is. The wide net approach allows us to create a generalized marketing message that we can apply to anyone Anyone who has hip pain, knee pain, spine pain, you name it, they're gonna think Rothman first. But that was just the beginning. We decided to take it one step farther. Rather than trying to sell orthopedic services one client at a time, we thought, hey, you know what? Let's try to sell orthopedic services one community at a time. So here's the logic behind it. If I'm trying to find individuals with back pain, it's gonna be pretty difficult to do that because nobody advertises on their social media page hey, you know what, I've got back pain. But what they will advertise are things about their life, such as their hobbies, and in this case, cycling. You see, in Philadelphia, cycling is huge. It turns out orthopedic practices love cyclists. Why? Because they hurt themselves all the time, and they have chronic pain. So we identified some of the most common sports and activities that eventually led to joint pain and deterioration. We knew that if we established Rothman as a thought leader in those communities and found ways to reach influential people in those groups, it would just be a matter of time before cyclists in that region thought Rothman first. By investing in the entire cycling community and creating inroads with cyclists, we position Rothman as a thought leader in their circle. Not only were we marketing to cyclists, 
but also to influencers. Because everyone knows that for every cyclist with a bad back, there's a spouse who's tired of hearing about it. Once we established that cyclists were the community that we were going after, we then began to target them as a group by designing specific marketing materials for cyclists in the form of ebooks, white papers, videos, etc. Because it reaches a very specific buyer persona, this process has worked very effectively and it's been adopted for most of the clients that we partner with. So now that we've gone through that, let me bring Todd back to the stage who can talk about buyer personas. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate that. So how do we do buyer persona exercises? Well, this is the part of marketing that most companies don't do. Why? Because it's hard. Essentially, we created what we call war room sessions with the subject matter experts from your team. In those sessions, we ask a series of really important questions about your products and your services, and then analyze how the answers to these questions vary from one buyer persona to the next buyer persona. Because what we don't want to do is market to all the same potential targets with just one message. For example, if you had a torn ACL, and then you started to get messaging from an orthopedics practice about how they have the best spine center in the country, there's a very small likelihood that you would even open up that email. Why would you even care? But if the same orthopedics practice did proper segmentation of their list and sent you messaging about knee pain, there's a good chance you'd open up that email. So the goal of buyer persona exercises is to get the right message to the right potential client at the right time. One of the best examples we've seen of buyer persona specific messaging comes from Jack Canfield, the godfather of the buyer persona. You may know him as the author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. Now writing a best-selling book is not why Jack is considered a genius. Where Jack was a genius is that he realized the power of creating highly tailored messaging for a specific target audience. For example, veterans, firefighters, and teachers, they could all find books that would leave them feeling like that book was written just for them. Segmentation and personalization works. Companies that leverage both, they commonly outperform their competitors. In the gap assessment, we also look at your sales and marketing integration. We believe that when sales and marketing are working together with their messaging, automation, analytics, and CRM, great things will happen. Now I want to walk through how buyer persona specific marketing can really impact sales. Faratech has made an excellent name for ourselves in the orthopedics industry. Here's how we market to orthopedics, CMOs, and physicians. So the graphic you see here represents the actual Faratech sales cycle. The circles represent every touch point we have with the sales target. As you can see here, a lead or a sales opportunity comes in here. Then the opportunity leads to a first time appointment, which we call an FTA. Then eventually a second time appointment, STA. Then we write a proposal for a gap assessment. And finally, the proposal is either accepted or rejected. The main reason why we do this ideal sales cycle is there comes a time in any sales journey where everything seems to be going really well. You've had one or two great sales presentation, the client's really resonating with your message, your approach, and your investment. But for some reason or another, that potential client just disappears or becomes a ghost. They don't answer your calls, texts, or emails, and they essentially slip off the hook. We call that phenomenon drop off. The goal of the sales cycle is to eliminate drop off by creating buyer persona specific marketing materials that are engaging and keep the potential sales target enthusiastic about your products or services.